Hey, hey, good morning guys. Thanks for showing up to the farm today. I appreciate your guys' help. Before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, if you watch the video all the way through, help support us on the YouTube algorithm. And also, we have Cornstar Farms merch available through the link in the description and 15% off Pit Vipers. Good chilly morning to everybody, but what a beautiful morning. We're able to walk across the yard. We're not walking through 10 foot of snow drift. We got Isaiah back there in the semi. We got Cooper, or we have Cole running up, trying to run me over. We're gonna move this semi out of the way. We're gonna load Isaiah up with a load of corn. Oh, oh, oh it's cool. I can see my breath in the truck. Jeez, Dad. Stinking crane. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? What do we bring the small crane for? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hop and hop and hop. <laughs> Originally, we were planning on going through this route, so they're gonna pick up the hopper bot and they're gonna set it down over there, reposition the crane, and then just kind of keep hopscotching it back and forth until they got it over to the pad. So they were thinking five but skips. They got looking into this ground a little bit more on the back side of this shed and it's kind of uneven. This is kind of tall, awkward-ish kind of structure. So they're gonna play it the safe route. So we're going around the opposite side of the farm. It's probably gonna be a couple more hops. Crane's just $800 an hour. It's, it's whatever. And in case you're wondering, I got quoted $44,000 to tear that bin down and put it back up over the new spot. So this is probably gonna be around 15 to 20. What we're looking at here is just as new to you guys as it is to me. So that square thing is what they call a spreader. So Tyler and his crew, they made that out of metal on the ground. They just put it together and they have straps hanging from it. And I guess they're gonna lower that down over the top of the bin. And then they have little eye hooks or something that they're gonna hook to kind of in the middle. And they're gonna lift it up, swing it over that direction, set it down, reposition the crane, lift it up, Swing it over another direction, set it down, reposition the crane. They're gonna keep doing that all the way around until they get it back over there by the leg. Hey Houdini. Huh? Wanna tell me how you did that? Well, I can't have a good spot, but I'm way down low on the screen. You no, know, did, did you see this? What? <laughs> that was sitting on there when you tipped it up and it's still there. <laughs> I seen that, I was like, wow, what chance is that? Cold start. Oh, she cold. She dead. Did he act like he wanted to? Much for us. That's cool. That's really cool. Really cool. But uh, the pucker factor is a little high right now. Look at this. Do Kids we, on their phone. Do we have our insurance paid up? I hope so, because <laughs> one of them cables breaks, we're going to have all kinds of damage. See, he's over there quality assurancing this. That's only $50,000 for the van and whatever that building costs. Hey, look how bare it looks here now. I know. Oh my goodness. This is getting colder out there. Oh yeah. Oh, and fuel's low. <laughs> he runs around more on empty fuel than anybody knows. Oh, I don't know what it is. I was fine earlier. Now I'm in just like freezing instantly. Well, I thought it was supposed to be cold this morning and then warm up, but it feels colder now than it did this morning. That thing takes up more room than you realize. Yeah, it does out here. Hopefully, we can get it over the diesel barrels. The swinging of the actual bin around doesn't take very long. The time consuming part with all of this is every time that they swing the crane and reposition it, they have to do a whole new setup. That means they have to take all these pads, move them over to the crane, set them on the crane, get the crane back leveled out. They have to take these counterweights and then they have to take them off the crane, put them on this semi-trailer, bring the semi-trailer around, and then put them back on the crane. Then they have to take these clevises, unhook them from the bend, then they have to set this down, and they have to rehook back up to this, lift it up there, rehook the clevises back up. So it's just a lot of a lot of setup time. Isaiah didn't waste any time. He's already back. Hey, careful, Coop. This isn't rated for a 2,500 bushel bank card. This should be the final and last swing. The crane will swing it up and around. Come around, you guys just watch. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. All right, 
Alright guys, so today they're talking sunny all day with temperatures in the low 50s and then tomorrow they're talking mid 50s. So where the weather's still nice, we're gonna grab all the trucks, trailers, combines, semis, and tractors and we're gonna do the old washi-washi. Hi Key Loki, this is not a fun job, but it needs to be done, so we're gonna go into it with a positive attitude. Cooper and I, what we're doing right now, we're taking 55 gallon drums of oil that we just ordered in. Uh, it's been sitting here in the shop for a little while. We're putting it in the rightful containers it belongs, like this yellowish container is hydraulic oil. The other one is 1540 engine oil. Oh, and just when we thought we were done with harvesting, we're done with the breakdowns. No. Nope. No power washer just decided to stop working. If you just stand up here with the screwdriver and hold that in, I can power wash for a couple hours. I'm sorry, the person you are trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet. What is this? Good afternoon, this is Mike. It's got a little button that says it's a, a 40 amp right beside it. When I push that with the screwdriver, it kicks it on, but as soon as I let go, it shuts off. I, I just sell the equipment. I don't really get into the technical aspects. But if you fry that fuse out, you might check continuity on that fuse. This is a little embarrassing. Now, apparently one of these three fuses is bad. We don't know which one. And we don't have a tester down there. That's what we got weighed for. All right, it's gotta be one of these three. Which one do you think it is? Oddball. I'm going with that one too. Nope, that one's good. Good. Watch them all be good. They're all good. Well, what do we do now? We know our motor's not bad because we could get it to turn on. Oh, <laughs> I just wanted to power wash. Let's see if we can jump them. Do one of those little green ground wires work? For all the electricians watching this, I apologize for botching terminology, but the way this works, guys, is electricity comes in somewhere through here, and then it does its whole little, little, little thing, and then it ends up coming out over here on our on-off switch. So it passes through that when we turn it on, it comes back out into here, into this wire mess, into that little box, and then from that box, it feeds into this, that feeds into that, and that feeds into that. But anyway, that little thing back there, we don't think that's working. So I guess in the meantime, we're just gonna do what we can. All the cabs still need to be cleaned out of everything. So, oh, don't drop this on my face. Put a little positive light on it. We did get the Brent Green cart washed and I got the back of the 340. This is the basically the dirtiest part of every tractor. Yes, nothing better than a clean truck. Don't look at the floor mat. I need the power washer to clean those. And check this out. It always amazes me how much trash we gather during the harvest season, but all of this dust was on the floor. Okay, I'm kidding. Combine cleaned up really nice too. I do think that our floor mat's not quite situated in there how it's supposed to, so I'm gonna have to mess with that a little bit. Need to put our cover back over our emergency, uh, is that the hub lock? I don't even know what that is. Oh yeah. It's always a good feeling when you get the combine done, though. It just gets dirty in there. Mm -hmm. 